Hello, and welcome to the Library Secret Workshop. I'm Garen, and today I'll be showing you how to make some contraptions that explode, launch, motor along, flip out, and fling. You probably have the supplies you need at home. If you don't, it's okay to make substitutions so long as you play it safe. Experiment. If you like the projects that we do today and want to do more, come to the library and check out the book series called Tabletop Wars. The projects in these books get pretty intense and they do require that you get an adult's help to use some things like craft knives. But let me give you a tip. If you're patient with your adult and you show that you can be responsible with tools, you may be trusted to use more tools in your own projects and make some amazing things. All right, let's get to those contraptions. For this, we're gonna need five popsicle sticks or craft sticks. Grab three to get started. Hold the first one straight up and down, then layer the other two on top of that, one to each side. Here's what that looks like under the end I'm pinching between my fingers. This stick can be on top, or that stick can be on top, so long as the straight up and down stick in the middle is the one on the bottom. Then we grab another stick and weave it through the three sticks we're holding. See how I'm putting it behind the middle stick but in front of the sticks on the side? If this is a little crooked, you can straighten it out. Then grab the last stick and weave it the opposite way. This time I'm putting it behind the sticks to the side and in front of the middle stick. It gets tough right at the end. Push down and look at all that tension. Now we should be able to carefully let it go. And now we're ready to drop it. For this, you need a straw. It works best if it's a bendy straw. You also need a jumbo straw that you can cut into smaller pieces like this. And a little bit of tape. Put the jumbo straw over the bendy part of this straw. Then grab a piece of tape to cover the end of the jumbo straw. So when you blow in the straw, it holds the air in. Here we go. For extra fun, you can make yourself a rocket or anything else that you want to send flying. Tape it to the back of the big straw and launch. We need two paper or styrofoam cups. These have lids, which I won't be using, but I'll make a suggestion about them later. We also need a couple of rubber bands, some paper clips. You'll need a pony bead or a similar bead. A nut or some washers might substitute. A straight straw. If you have a bendy straw, cut the bendy part off to get a straight straw. A pen or pencil, and some tape. The first thing to do is to make a mark right in the middle of each coffee cup's bottom. Then we need to poke a hole. This is where a big paper clip can come in handy. You might also use a thumbtack. Please check with your adult on this. Once you have the hole started, make the hole a little bigger with a pen or pencil, but not too big. For the next part, we need to join up two rubber bands to make one longer rubber band. The way you do this is to loop one rubber band through the other halfway, like this. Then pull the bench rubber band back through itself. Pull them apart and you've got a longer rubber band. Grab one of the cups. We need the rubber band to go through the hole. You should be able to pull it through with your fingers. Maybe twist it together a bit like I did. Then reach inside the cup and start pulling it through. Pull the knot through the bottom, but hold on to the other end. All right, a cup on a band. 
We need to make sure the loop doesn't pull into the cup. So grab a paper clip, put the paper clip through the rubber band, and fold the paper clip together so it can't easily fall off of the rubber band. Then you can pull and it stays there. We need to be able to get this rubber band through the other cup. To help us do that, we're going to make a little tool using a paper clip. Straighten it out most of the way. except leave one end hooked. Take that hook and smush it down a little bit so it's thinner. Grab your empty cup and put the hook through the bottom. You can also use a crochet hook for this. Bring the cup with the rubber band closer and hook onto the rubber band with the tool. This is a bit tricky. Carefully pull the rubber band back through the hole. We need to be able to hold it here so it doesn't pull through. So take a straw and put it through the middle of the rubber band for now. It's holding on. We can now remove the paper clip tool. These cups are a bit askew. If we line them up, they'll brace against each other. Wrap some tape around the middle so the cups stick together securely. The last tricky thing is to add a paper clip and bead to the end with a straw. The bead is to help everything rotate more freely. The paper clip is to keep the bead from being pulled into the cup. Put a fresh paper clip through the rubber band and fold it together like on the other side. Hold the rubber band loop with your fingers and remove the straw. Slip a bead onto the top of the loop. Poke the straw back through the rubber band loop, but this time it's on top of the bead. Now you can rotate the straw to wind up the rubber band hidden inside the cups. We want enough tension to drive the cup, but not so much tension that the rubber band breaks. Put the cups down and watch them go. Uh-oh, they're not going anywhere. When things don't go right, you try to figure out how to fix it. I forgot to put tape on the paper clip on the other side. The rubber bands were spitting the paper clip that's by itself instead of pushing the straw. Let's try again. Much better. A variation is to put the cup bottoms together so the lidded tops form wheels at the ends. Will it drive straighter then? For the book trap, we're going to need thick cardboard. This is called corrugated cardboard. You can see how it has these holes at the side. We need a paper clip. A large paper clip works best for this. A rubber band. A pen to do some marking. A scissors to do some cutting. And a pliers. This is a needle nose pliers. You can use other kinds of pliers, but needle nose works best for bending paper clips. The first thing is to take your paper clip and spread it out with your hands. Try to make it into a straight line. It doesn't have to be a perfect straight line. Now we need to make a U shape. If it's lopsided, you can just straighten it out and try again, or try with another paper clip. Pliers might help with this part, but the U-shape doesn't have to be perfect either. Grab an end with pliers and twist them outwards to make a little hook for the rubber band. Make a hook on the other side. We have a U-shape with the hooks. We could put a rubber band on here. This rubber band is a little large. But the nice thing about rubber bands is that you can twist them around and loop them over to make a tighter band. We're going to set this part aside and prepare the cardboard. Now here's the important thing. Look for where the holes are. The holes are on this edge, but not the other edge. That means the cardboard has a grain that follows the holes. The grain is the strong direction for the cardboard. 
Let's mark the grain. This will look familiar if you do any sewing. Grab your U-shape, line it up with the grain. It's a little bit like a bow and arrow. Let's figure out how much cardboard we need so the cardboard can spin but not hit the paper clip. Line it up at the edge. The cardboard has to be a little bit shorter this way. And a little bit shorter that way. Mark the line on the cardboard. We need the cardboard to be thin enough to fit into the U-shape, so put a leg over the side. Mark another line on the cardboard. You can make X's to mark the cardboard we don't want. We just want a little rectangle that can fit in the U-shape and spin. Cut it out with your scissors. The cardboard will go in between the rubber bands, like this. Can you see what you can do now? You can spin it. As you spin, it'll have more tension and want to spin back the other way to relieve tension. If you put it down on the table and put something on top of it, what happens if someone comes along and picks up the scissors? Yikes! This time, I've hid it inside this book called Tabletop Wars. Surprise the enemy! Make your own traps and triggers. In fact, if you look right here, you can see the book trap on the cover. This is where I learned to make it. For our last project, we'll need 12 pencils. It's better if they aren't sharpened. You could also use pens with caps. We also need a bunch of rubber bands. Let's start with some basic skills. Here's how to tie two pencils together with a rubber band. Twist and loop over. Do this as many times as you need to make a long rubber band tight. But most of the time, we'll want the pencils to be crossing each other. If you wrap them all the same way, whoop, you can see they want to snap back together. That is a cool effect, and maybe you want to experiment with that later. Here's a way to wrap a rubber band so it's more balanced. Even if you want two pencils to be crossing in the middle eventually, it's easier to work with two pencil ends that are close together. Start by sliding a rubber band over a long side. Twist it around, loop it over, and slide it over the long side again. But instead of continuing to wrap in the same direction, swing the rubber band around and start wrapping the little pencil ends. This tightens on the other diagonal. Wrap around the same number of times you did for the first diagonal. As you can see, wrapping it in different directions helps to balance it out. The pencils stay more square and don't snap together. This won't be perfect, and they'll often bend a little, but that's okay. Let's start making the catapult by tying two pencils together. This will be the catapult arm that throws things. If rubber bands aren't in the spot you want them, you can always move them around. Now grab a third pencil. We want to put it across the catapult arm like this. But remember, it helps to work with pencil ends together if you can. Put the rubber band on the long side. Let's twist and loop it three times. So we've got our diagonal this way. Bring it over here and wrap it around another three times to match. Rubber bands are going this way and that way, and it holds on pretty well. To make it centered, push the pencil through. Then push the pencil down. There we go. We have two pencils together and one crossing them in the middle. For our next step, we're going to add two more pencils parallel to the catapult arm, just like this. Notice that the up and down pencils are all on top of the horizontal pencil. We want them all on the same level, with this cross pencil at the bottom. Let's get wrapping. 
Mush them all together. There's a lot of mushing in this project. Put the other pencil on the other side. You can choose to have erasers line up on the same side or not. It's just preference. How did we do? It's okay that they're a little askew. We want the bottom of the catapult arm to be a little shorter than the pencils on the side so it can swing freely. Then grab another rubber band. This one goes around all four up and down pencils. This rubber band will power the catapult. It brings the side pencils in. Again, that's okay because we're going to add another pencil to hold the side pencils apart. Anytime you're working on putting two pencils together, you can just let the rest dangle. Now here's where things change. We can't approach from a long end and balance out the wrapping. You'll need to twist and loop just on the short pencil ends. Look at that, it's perfect. Okay, it's not, but that's okay. We'll add more pencils to this catapult frame and they'll help each other stay where they need to be. There, that laid down pretty good. This is starting to look like a catapult. We want both sides of this rubber band on one side of the catapult arm. If you bend it down, it snaps. What we need now is one more pencil here. So when it goes, whoosh, it hits this pencil and stops suddenly. We can go down the long side of the pencil this time because it's still open. Remember, we want to pull this back and hit. So let's get this corner. It's only short ends, so we'll simply go around and around the same way until it's tightened up. There we go. Again, it's pretty askew. You can kind of mush it around. If we hold it up, we see that we can fire it. Pew! Let's build a base for the catapult so it holds itself up. Lay out three more pencils to make a big C-shape, or backward C-shape in this case. These ends are going to connect with what we've already made. Make sure both of these are on the same side, so they're both on top of the pencil below. Now we'll combine the base with what we've made before. We're holding three short ends at once. We can just go all the way around all three until it's nice and tight. Same for the other side. What we need now are two more pencils to finish the back of the catapult. These are going to go here, so we can make a big 3D catapult. Last corner. It's all put together, but as you can see, it looks a little crooked. You can carefully push the pencils around to adjust it. There! That is standing up. You can see that if we go back, it fires. Let's put a little rubber band on the catapult arm. This gives us a higher friction shelf to put small objects. You could also glue a soda bottle lid to the arm. Testing. Let's give it a try with this eraser. And that's it for today's contraptions. If you want to learn more, come to the library, check out that book series called Tabletop Wars. Check out other books we have on hands-on crafts. You can learn a lot at the library, and we library staff are here to help. Thanks for joining us today.